Baller in the stunt named after his driver. Can't sign your left hand to Head of Long Dane Street, guys, just to let you know that this is the area of Dublin where Dublin gets its beautiful name. Back in Viking days, a river called the River Puddle formed the Black Pool in this channel area. If you translate Black Pool into Gaelic, Black is Dove, Pool is Rain, you put them together, you get Dublin! Just to let you know, guys, the River Puddle, hang on, hungry Kelts on your right, one, two, three! The River Puddle is now an underground river, and I will show you later on the tour where it flows into the River Liffey. Where are we? We're on Dame Street. Guys, on your left hand side, this beautiful, magnificent white building coming out inside the footpath. This is City Hall. Dates back to the 18th century, I believe. A very important building in Dublin because it's where our councillors have their sleepovers. <laughs> Originally, it was a hall for merchants until the council bought in 1850 for their so called meetings. If you look over between the lanterns, you'll see a grey door with a sign above it saying Dublin City, the story of the capital. This is a magnificent exhibition where you'll go and see the original chart of our Dublin City, where the city of Dublin was promised to the men of Britain by King Henry II back in the 12th century. By the way guys, City Hall was once the Royal Exchange in Dublin and large sums of money changed hands in that building. I traditionally give up to the mid-1990s to the best of my knowledge. If you look up to your left hand side guys, see the archway behind the black gate. The archway behind the black gate with the white statue up on top. That's called the state entrance into Dublin Castle. Yes, Dublin Castle. Where the English ruled the country for over 700 years. Until it was handed back to the Irish state in 1922. Just to let you know very quickly guys, us Vikings were the first people to build on the site of Dublin Castle back in the 9th century. It was where we built our early fortress to defend the budding town of Dublin. And how we did it was very, very simple. We got stones and we held the stones together using a mixture of horse hair, oxus blood and eggshells. Now as you can imagine, using eggshells in the mixture, the structure didn't last very long. <laughs> but at least we had a crack in time putting it together. <laughs> Feel right stupid yoga after that joke. Can't stand your right, what's up, and we head up along Dane Street, guys, and directly in front of us is Christ Church Cathedral, but we'll see that a little later on the tour. Count on your left foot, two, three! What I really want to point out to you is one of the most famous streets in Dublin. It's coming up on your right hand side. It's a little street going down there to your right hand side, guys, where you see the Volvo Estate and the purple Toyota Avengers, is it, or something like that? A blue board or something? I don't want the Toyota Corolla. I'm surprised it's actually still on the hill. I thought they had problems with it. Anyway, um, this Shambles Street, guys, is where the famous Handel's Messiah was first performed in the world back in 1742. Hallelujah! Chipper in Dublin City called Leo Bordogs. We give him a big rose, go by on your right, what's out time? And more lovely Kelts on your right, what's out time? Buongiorno, buongiorno. Uh, come on, star. Uh, sorry, guys, uh, getting back to Leo Bordogs' chip shop, the oldest chipper in Dublin, a great place to go later on if you are hungry, but be very careful because last night there was a terrible fight. Kelts coming up on your left hand side, what's out time? Yes, apparently three fish got battered. <laughs> There was a rumour going around that a sausage and a bean like a bathroom as well. You know what we call that? A real porky. <laughs> Would you add him and eat it? I wouldn't bleed and believe it. Now guys, look at the red brick building on your left hand side. You'll see big circular plaques up behind the trees. See the circular plaques? See the pictures in the plaques, guys? Pictures in the plaques depict yeah, scenes from a famous novel called oh, well, Gulliver's good. Travels. Yes. I'm sure you've all heard of Gulliver's Travels, haven't you guys? And it was written by a very famous gentleman called Jonathan Swift back in the 1700s. He was also known as Dean Swift for the specific reason. He was the Dean of St. Patrick's Cathedral. Coming up on your right hand side now. The largest church in Ireland. To the honour of our patron Saint St. George. Sorry, sorry, hang on, sorry, guys. I was in London, sorry. sorry. St. Patrick's Cathedral was built in honour of our patron Saint St. Patrick! By the way guys, and not only was Jonathan Swift the author of Gulliver's Travels and the Dean of St. Patrick's Cathedral, back in the 1700s Jonathan Swift had a novel idea on how to get rid of poverty and starvation in Ireland, and it was a very simple solution. It apparently suggested that the very poor should sell the very young to the very rich, to be eaten or ate. I believe he said to taste it lovely with a bottle of Chianti <laughs> and a packet of fava beans. Somebody asked me to see a distant relative of Hannibal Lecter. I said, I don't know about that, but I can tell you one thing that would surely silence the little lambs. <laughs> if you pardon the pun. Cycling Celts, what they're doing! Hi, guys. I want to 
ride my bicycle. I want to ride my bike. I want to ride my bicycle. I want to ride it where I like. Uh, anyway, guys, um, it's a revolting idea to suggest that somebody should sell the very young to the very rich to be eating their ass. But if you really think about it, it does put a new spin on a happy meal. <laughs> it's apparently with the restaurants in the area you got the idea for a kids menu. That's great in the barrel, isn't it? <laughs> by the way, there's a rumor going around that Jonathan was asked one evening by a friend and his friend said to him, Surely, surely you love children. And Jonathan replied, Oh, I do, I do, but I could not eat a whole one. <laughs> I don't ever bleed and call me Shirley again. Yeah. We're actually in an area of Dublin that is known yeah. as the Liberties. It apparently got its name from when Dublin was a walled city back in medieval times. Yeah. There were numerous areas that's around the walls of Dublin called the Liberties, but this is the only area that's retained that lovely name. Oh, and basically what it meant was anybody living outside the walls of Dublin, they were at liberty to do exactly oh, as they please. Yeah. If you look up here to your left hand side guys, you see a very important street in Dublin. It's one of the oldest streets in the city. Now being one of the oldest streets in Dublin and being Irish, we called it New Street to try and confuse a lot of views. So because we get For the specific news. reason is Irish because people don't believe in state and they believe in obvious. And you'll only realize that the longer you remain in this country. Yes, Irish people do not believe in state and they believe in obvious. And you'll realize that the longer you remain in this country because try and get directions from somebody in Ireland. I mean, it's the, absolutely the impossible. The See the road up there in your way. So 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 the 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 See the other road up further on your... Well, ignore that one as well. Don't, don't, don't be bothered with that one. It's only when you're in the country a little bit longer you'll understand what I'm talking about. Now guys, we are heading back up by St. Patrick's Cathedral. Coming up on your right hand side, this is our largest church in Ireland. This magnificent cathedral takes back to the 12th century! Communion counts on my left, I'll tell you! We're in the money, I think it's funny! Exhibition known as Dublinia. Did anybody see the gentleman standing in the back of the Viking motion? That's my brother. Oh, stop that. You're frightening the life out of me again. That's the second time you've done that today. How are you doing? Guys, the gentleman standing in the back of the Viking longship is my brother. He's had that job for the last few months and he's absolutely bored stiff. <laughs> Sorry about that one. Um, anyway, Dublinia, by the way, guys, is a beautiful exhibition here in Dublin City because it gives you a little insight into what Viking Dublin was like to live in and medieval Dublin was like to live in back in the 1970s. Some of you still awake back there. Now, the reason I said the 1970s, by the way, guys, there was like medieval times in the city for three reasons. The first reason was we had white platform shoes. You probably don't remember them, do you? I think they're coming back into vogue again, aren't they? We also had white bell-bottom trousers going around like John Travolta carrying a can of paint. Well, you can tell by the way I move my walk, I'm a world man, no time for talk. Swinging this kind of painted around, I'm gonna hit myself in the head. It's alright, we can sing, you can hear that again. Uh, by the way guys, the third and the most important reason was we had the Bay City Rollers. Oh, Lamb of the Vine. <laughs> bye bye baby, baby, goodbye, my baby. Does anybody remember the Bay City Rollers? Me? I remember the Bay City Rollers very, very well. It was very envious of the hell the young was chasing after them and I couldn't get a kick in the stampede. By the way, guys, uh, you're probably wondering why I know the words of the songs so very well. Very, 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 very well. How, why I know the words of the songs so very, very well is very simple. My sister was a big fan of the group and I'm sticking to that story. <laughs> 
now we're turning right. I should have my tart and scarf at home and be walking my Gordon Gecko braces. And we, we, we sort of half cut, I don't know what we used to call the, the jeans. We used to have, uh, they were like drain pipes and they were sort of three quarter length. And you, you wear buffer boots, big, big, big uh, Doc Martin boots. Anyway. I'm showing my age now, so I am. Anyway guys, getting back to the tour, which is most important. I want to point out a magnificent building over here on your left hand side with a green dome on the top of it. That building on your left hand side is... Four oh, courts, wow. thanks. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly got a mental block there because I'm sitting on my brains. Um, <laughs> that's why it's very dangerous for me to fart. I can actually have a brain hemorrhage. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the green dome building on the left hand side, that green dome belongs to the four courts by the way guys, I think it dates back to the early 1800s. The four courts are the highest courts in the land of Ireland by the way, they're the, they're the supreme courts in the land. They can't get any higher than the four courts in this country. Now, even though they were the highest courts in Ireland, with us Irish being messers, we decided to build them at sea level. <laughs> I let that one sink in. <laughs> By the way, that's one of my better jokes. 